Hey YouTube, 3D Printed Life here with just a quick update on the Eclipse 3D2, uh, but not so much design-wise, more over my prototyping stage-wise. So, I had a slightly weird thing happen. Uh, I was using this for the GTEC GT2560, and uh, these fan outputs are supposed to be 12 volts, even though it has 24 volt input, right? Um, it has a little jumper here where you can attach a jumper to set these fans as 24 volt outputs instead of the standard 12. Uh, but when the jumper's off, like it is now, it should be 12 volts. Uh, so that's all good, right? So I've been running it for uh, probably about five or six hours of runtime now. Uh, no issues. All of a sudden, yesterday, I turn it on and it's at 24 volts instead of 12 volts output. So that's okay for the E3D fan, which is this guy. Uh, because it technically is a 24 volt fan, but when you run it at 12 volts, it's just super, super quiet, which is awesome. Obviously not as much airflow, but still enough. However, I had a cooling fan plugged in. Let me just grab this guy. And if you've ever printed with PLA, you know that cooling is absolutely necessary to print PLA nicely. Um, and unfortunately, this fan does not like 24 volts. In fact, it just immediately killed it. And... <laughs> I can't find any US sellers of this fan on eBay, they're all directly from China. So it's going to be about like two weeks until I can print in PLA again. However, as you'll see in another video that's probably already posted, the PLA quality is amazing. It's amazing. I, I it's, it's hard to capture it on this camera because it's not high enough resolution, but awesome stuff. So yeah, no PLA for a while. But here's the good news. I just got in today the 3M uh, transfer tape so that I can attach the silicone heater to the bottom of the bed, and that means I can print an ABS, and ABS does not require a cooling fan to print nicely. So that means I'm going to be doing a lot of ABS prints for the next two weeks in order to uh, further dial in the machine. Although, I mean, after doing this print, even though it is only a single print and it's a fairly easy print, um, not super easy to look nice, but it easy print to do. So yeah, I'm going to be using ABS to dial stuff in. So that's good. I also did test out this bed and it is actually putting on 180 watts. So that's awesome. That should provide some really quick heat up times. So now I just want to quickly talk about end stops because I have finalized all the end stop positions. Uh, now this is the latest fan bracket. Um, there's a little chunk cut out just because of my current setup. I can't have that part there. But oh. But basically, uh, that's going to be a full piece. It's not going to have that little cutout. Uh, and you'll notice the end stop is mounted right there. So this guy is going to mount underneath like that. The fan will bolt to the underside, and this end stop will be sitting pretty much directly underneath this carriage down in here. Um, so that's for the x-axis. That's going to come that way, and it's going to trigger against a post on the y-axis part right around here. There's going to be a little bolt thing sticking out that that's going to contact. So that will settle the uh, x-axis. For the y-axis, I have this little bracket. So basically this bracket is going to just stick on right at the end of the rail, right around here where that bolt is right now. Uh, and that's going to be for the y-axis end stop. So the uh, carriage will come all the way forwards for that. And then finally the z-axis, that one I haven't really done yet. Uh, I designed it up quickly, but I still have some work to do. It's going to be mounted to the bottom side of this plate. There's going to be a hole right around here where a bolt can travel through to trigger the end stop. And then on the Z-axis, I will have a tapped hole uh, with a bolt and a spring so that you can easily adjust the Z-axis end stop height. Um, so it is going to be homing to the bottom. So I know this can be potentially dangerous uh, since you're homing at the bottom and then you're just using a known distance to travel to the top. Um, so it can be problematic, however, it's uh, probably just the best way for me to do it because there's really nowhere else to mount an end stop to contact at the top. As you can see, I'm at the top of travel right now, uh, and I mean there's nothing here. This is a giant gap, nowhere to put anything, um, so that just really is not going to happen. Uh, and I'm not going to, I don't want to mount anything to the back panel that is fundamental to the printer working. So it's going to be mounted on the bottom, but I think that should look awesome because that means that all three end stops are going to be super well hidden. The first one's going to be up here behind the panel, well at least the edge of the panel. Second one's going to be like right in the middle of the carriage in between the fan and the carriage. 
and the last one's gonna be underneath the plate, so there'll just be a hole there. So that should look very nice and tidy, um, and it should help to just make the printer look a lot more professional and clean overall, since there's not gonna be a bunch of random end stops and wires going everywhere. So uh, this end stop's just gonna have wires that are gonna run down here and then go under. Um, the two motors will just probably run straight down, because they do have these nice sheathed uh, cords, so that'll look nice. And then uh, this whole wire harness will be for the extruder carriage and the x-axis end stop and fan. So that's going to run up and back over here. And then I haven't figured out what I'm going to do with that yet. I'll probably run it behind the panel and then have it cut back in underneath. And then everything else is going to be mounted under here, of course. So that should be pretty awesome. Um, so the next steps, I'm going to be mounting the power supply. I'm not going to be bouncing that board because it has pissed me off now and I'm probably not going to use it. Instead I'll most likely use the Isteague X5 Mini V3 because I used the V1 on my original Eclipse 3D. It's worked great, no complaints really, so um, why not use that on this new version of the printer. So I'll be using that. I might possibly be using those super fancy, uh, they're like the TMC stepper drivers. They're a bit expensive so I may just buy them and try them out. Um, so I'll see about that, but they might be worth it, so who knows. Uh, and then if I do use that board, the good news is Roy has changed around the design on this V3 to be uh, much more mounting friendly. What that means is basically all the ports are on this side like they've always been. However, there's nothing that really comes sticking up out of the board to make it taller until after the end of this Ethernet block. So if you look from the side, my thumb wasn't in the way. You can see that the first thing that will be coming up is the first stepper driver here. Um, unfortunately, this board doesn't support dual extrusion, which sucks, but uh, it is a much nicer board overall. But basically, that means that you can mount it underneath here, just like so, and this stuff will actually clear underneath that extrusion, and then the rest of the stuff will have plenty of room to go up. Um, so basically, I could just mount this board right against the edge, cut a few holes in the panel, and you'll have full access to all the ports, which is awesome. Um, so again, that is still something that I'm going to be working out in the future. I do need to get a proper USB cable to plug this guy in and test it out on this printer, but there's plenty of time to do that. There's really no rush on the control board since that is something that can easily be changed pretty much up to the last minute. The main stuff is getting all of the mechanics sorted out, getting the CNC plates finalized, stuff like that, which um, once I get all those end stops in, I'll be pretty much set to go with those and then I can... Um, probably order them soon after for the beta batch. Stay tuned for more. I'll be doing a lot of ABS printing once I get this guy hooked up. Uh, hopefully once I get that board on, I'll be able to do some better prints without frying my uh, fans. <laughs> and that's pretty much it for this video. So thank you guys for watching. I'll catch you later.